Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and I'm going to go through the, uh, the, the, the variable section sweep tool, except uh, we're going to do the swept blend version of that. The PTC got the name mixed up, I think. The uh, swept blend tool is, is really what they meant to call the variable section sweep, and the variable section sweep is the swept blend. So first thing I'm going to do is log into the back end of the website, and if I can spell it right, the faster you type it, the better it is to spell it. And uh, okay, and I'm going to go in and now and look at the the surfacing tutorials that we've prepared for our one week surfacing class. Okay, now I'm going <clears> to <throat> scroll down and and uh, quickly go into the uh, variable section. Everything you can do with the sweep functionality. That's that uh, green surface there at the bottom. Now when I click into this section here, this is basically everything you can do with the sweep, and I'm going to do everything you can do with the sweep plus the swept blend tool and 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 using uh, graph features with swept uh, swept uh, variable section sweeps. Except I'm not going to cover the. I am going to, however, do the same thing with uh, ISDX, so we can see the swept blend functionality with the uh, ISDX. There's the uh, trash par variable geometry. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's start a new file. I'm, I typically start out with a bounding box geometry so that I can kind of re keep constrain myself within a certain kind of graphical area. I'll make that any size we like. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and create a a curve that um, I can traject about. I'll just uh, lock it tangent at the base here and then tie tie uh, tie alignments to the ends. Very picky about how I dimension uh, things as well, so I'm going to dimension it um, using two two x dimensions. Typically, I like to get rid of the r the radius values there. See, that's a classic design engine move there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and sketch myself on this end a uh, an arc or a straight line. Let's sketch let's sketch a straight line, and I'll put it at about 45 degrees. I usually rotate it out into 3D so I can see what I'm getting ready to align to. I'll do the same thing to the other side and put it to about 88 degrees. I typically measure dimension the length of the geometry plus the, um, the, the, the radius. I'll do the same thing to the other side but uh, give it a, uh, an 88 degree. You put a datum plane in there. This geometry, I'll, I'll put it in at 88 degrees, just so we can really see. Never do I go to 90. There's always some kind of pull direction on my geometry, so <clears throat> 88 would be two degrees pull direction. I always dimension the length of the geometry and the angle. All right. So now what I need to do is modify that to 88. All right, here we go. Okay, now we're going to evoke. What we need to do is drag the icon over so that it's in the insert section, and we're going to use we're going to use the uh, customized screen to drag that icon out. <clears throat> customize screen, and uh, the icon is hiding under the insert options. So I'm going to go to insert. And and look for the the what what should be the variable section sweep tool. Drag him over there. Now uh, your system administrator should be able to lock that that geometry so your screen can always pop up like that for you. Start save out your start part probably. Okay, so let's evoke the tool. Grab my trajectory, and uh, instead of sketching my sections, I'm going to go ahead and select my sketching my my sections. Okay, use your insert to go to the other side and there's the uh, what I would call a variable section sweep but PTC I uh, got it mixed up I think but uh, that's the uh, swept blend surface alright so now what we're going to do is we're going we're to exercise the geometry a little bit play with it and see, see it work 
and uh, then we're going to do the same exact thing with uh, with ISDX. Right, evoke the ISDX tool. I'll create a three degree curve across the geometry, locating it um, as in effect aligning it to the ends. Snap it to the ends. Uh, adjust the geometry so it, uh, so it's planar. Then <coughs> um, ro we'll rotate out the yellow handles so that it uh, that it mimics somewhat the shape that we just did. I'm going to go ahead and make make this plane active, and then I'm going to sketch a line straight up. Notice notice how that that curve went straight up relative to the plane. A little bit of an angle to it. Just by pushing it over. Oh, this is okay. That's that's how to create a, a surface there. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that after I modify it some, and then I'm going to put the same 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 curve on the other side. Now. Delete the surface. I'm going to go ahead and use the copy tool and copy it and slide it all the way down to the other side. Okay, and I'll I'll modify that geometry relative to the plane that's active. And I'll push this one back down to what would be about 45. Okay, now I'll do the same thing. I evoke the four-part boundary tool. In this case, we're not doing a four-part boundary. Middle click, left click, and then hold my control key down to grab the other side. Now in ISDX, I, I created the same type of geometry. Well, we hope to see you at a design in quite a bit more. But Bart Brecca again, designengine.com. Thank you very much.